welcome to Turing Dev Talks, where we take you through the basic concepts of skill sets and technologies that top American companies look for when hiring software engineers. Today's conversation is a bit unique. We are going to talk about MLOps, a field that is catching the attention of industry leaders from across the globe. We learn more about the rise of MLOps, the difference between MLOps and DevOps, and the challenges that this emerging tech can solve. To give us his expert insight, we have a very special guest joining us on the panel today. From the city of dreams, Mumbai, India, we have Parv joining us on the panel. Parv started his career as a software engineer at Facebook, California, worked for five long years, and then transitioned to Instagram. Today, he is the machine learning tech lead at Turing. Let's hear more from him. Hi, Paul. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today and for taking time out for this discussion. Uh, thank you so much for those kind words, Alina. Uh, happy to be here and uh, would love to chat about MLOps. Now, uh, before we begin, uh, we would like to we would like you to tell us more about your fascinating background. I'm sure, like myself, a lot of other people, especially developers, would be interested to know more about that. So, from Facebook to Turing, how has your experience been? Um. Uh, I would say I've been lucky that I've had the opportunity to work at some of the uh, premier uh, tech companies of my time, uh, starting out from Facebook, Instagram uh, to Turing. Uh, during my five and a half years at Facebook, uh, I had the opportunity to work at a wide variety of projects, uh, ranging from improving our ads ranking models to working on building the first ever plug and play uh, platform for machine learning called FB Learner Flow. Uh, I was a part of a team responsible for improving the ranking and the relevance on Instagram Explore and hashtag pages. Uh, I also worked on like the hashtag following product, which Instagram launched around a few years back. Uh, the learnings and experiences that I've gained from working at Facebook has been like the backbone of my ability to now work with uh, up and coming organizations and meaningfully contribute to setting up and improving their data science and machine learning pipeline. Okay, that looks like you've worked on very interesting tech products. And I'm sure we're using a lot of those in uh, in a real life, especially on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, okay, now let's talk about the emergence of MLOps. And would you like to tell us more about that? What is the buzz all about? Uh, sure. So MLOps is a relatively new term coined uh, a couple of years ago, gaining mainstream traction now. Uh, however, the po problems it refers to have existed in the industry since like the first time someone ever tried to deploy a machine learning model to production, right? Anyone who's ever tried to deploy an ML model in production can attest to the fact that it comes with an entirely different set of problems uh, compared to any of the other well-established software engineering practices that we have right now, right? Uh, focusing on ML ops is an attempt to elevate machine learning from experimentation uh, to a fully contributing member of any organization's tech stack. Uh, right. So uh, the industry is uh, witnessing a shift. And if you are to go by the trends, the recent trends, this transformation has the potential to bring about amazing results to the table. Is that, uh, is that how you feel as well? Uh, uh, absolutely. Right. So as I said, like, you know, focusing on MLOps is essentially trying to uh, take machine learning models from experimentation to actually getting them to work in production, getting them to solve uh, actual business problems. So I definitely see them uh, having a very high impact. Right, right. So Opar, you've been in the industry for a fairly long time, which would also have given you an idea of the basic functioning of the system. But as an expert with the taste of ML in both academia and industry, what differences did you notice? And in other words, uh, how different is machine learning in industry when compared to that in the field of research? I, I think that's a very interesting question. Uh, the problems that we face uh, for machine learning projects in academia or industry are actually uh, quite different in my opinion. Uh, for example, in academia, there's consensus around like, you know, what are the best practices, what data sets we are going to use, what metrics we will be calculating. Uh, and this makes not just uh, the training, but like evaluation of models and experimentation a lot easier. On the other hand, when it comes to the industry, uh, the problems start arising from the moment someone says that I want to deploy a machine learning model into production, right? You've got to now start and figure out, okay, like, you know, what data do I have to actually train a machine learning model? Uh, once I have this data, is it actually the right data that I was logging? Because as we know, engineering is never perfect. 
uh, you've got to try and understand like, or, or try and decide like, you know, what metrics do I want to use for my machine learning model? And how do these metrics tie back to some uh, business metric or like some business impact, right? Because at the end of the day in industry, what you're trying to do is how do I make this machine learning model help solve a real world problem that I have in my product? Right. Just to be clear, I'm not trying to say that machine learning in the industry is more difficult. Uh, in fact, many a times it is the machine learning advances from the academic field that form the backbone of the work done in the industry. Right. The differences in the high level are essentially one tries to find the best solution to solve a problem and the other tries to find the best solution with respect to an organization's goal. So uh, I think that's like the key driving factor between or difference between uh, machine learning in academia versus machine learning in industry. Okay. Okay. Interesting. So machine learning, as we can see, and as you just mentioned, is an ever-evolving field, I think, and it's more experimental than theoretical. Just to reiterate, the difference between ML and academia and industry is striking. You felt defined data sets and metrics when studying the subject in college, but in the industry, you might have to decide what the metric is or even create one from scratch, right? Uh, yeah, I think I agree with you there. Absolutely. Okay, now that we're talking about the industry part, uh, let us deep dive into the use of machine learning in the industry. Statistics reveal that about 87% of data science projects never make it into production. In fact, many uh, machine learning models never see the light of the day. As per your experience, how far is this true and what are the possible reasons for this? Uh, sure, so when it comes to the industry, right, like, uh, any product, any software, or any uh, improvement that you're trying to do, you're always trying to solve a business problem, right? You're trying to drive a business goal forward. Uh, the same holds true for when it comes to like an ML solution, right? Uh, the reason you want to deploy an ML solution is because you expect it to uh, improve some metric or improve like some user behavior or like, you know, drive some actual value that you can measure for your business, right? Uh, in my opinion, uh, building a one-off solution in, in an IPython notebook or like, you know, being able to show a proof of concept when it comes to a machine learning solution is the easy part. The difficulties start arising when we actually want to integrate this with our production environment, right? Uh, the solution that we are building needs to adhere to certain uh, requirements that any other production system would have. Like, you know, it needs to have monitoring in place for real time behavior. It should have a graceful uh, fallover or like, you know, failure behaviors. Uh, Many a times when we are deploying these models to production, they require constant uh, retraining, right? So you need to be logging in what is the, like, the latest uh, user interaction or like the latest data that is coming in. All of these make uh, deploying machine learning models into production an entirely different problem set versus just showing that I can build a proof of concept, have an offline uh, model and an offline uh, data set, and then show you that, okay, like, you know, this works and this solves the problem that we have. Okay. I think that's very true. And uh, on similar grounds, we have another research that says that 72% of organizations that begin that began AI pilots couldn't even deploy a single application in production. And I think uh, that very well fits with what you just mentioned, how difficult it is to you know actually deploy a product. Absolutely, right? So like when I'm building an AI pilot, I'm doing the easy part. I'm just building an experiment, I'm saying, I have control over the data set. I have control over the model. And it doesn't make a difference on how long I get to because I can do like an offline prediction. I can say that, okay, like, you know, I was able to solve something. But trying to deploy that into production, that's where most of the failures happen. Right, right. So do you think that MLOps has the power to bridge this gap between creation of a product and the deployment of it? Uh, absolutely. So MLOps is all about trying to solve the end-to-end uh, life cycle management problems that arise when working on a machine learning problem, right? Uh, it's, tri it's geared towards taking an ML proof of concept and getting it production ready. It talks about how can we retrain models easily. Uh, essentially, it talks about how can we log the data better? How can we make all of these processes seamless? How can we have each of these blocks testable, right? How do we go about calculating the features that we need for our model in production? Uh, once we deploy the model, right? Like how do we monitor the predictions that are being made by the model and are they in line with what our expectations are? All of these steps by themselves are what make uh, taking a machine learning model from the experimental phase to production phase very difficult. And ML Ops focuses on solving each of these problems. Okay, that's very interesting. 
uh, with the use of MLOps, I think the industry will head into a transformation of its kind. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, now you just mentioned uh, Parth, that MLOps is catching the attention of industry leaders across industries and sectors. But as an industry insider, what is the ground reality? Is this hype really real? Uh, I can actually personally attest to the fact that uh, there is an increasing interest in ML ops, not just from uh, a few companies, but like across the industry, right? Uh, everybody is mo focusing more and more on like, not just creating like a shiny proof of concept or like a shiny demo video. Everybody wants to derive real business value out of like the investments that they make in machine learning. And the only way to do that is to ensure that your shiny proof of concept or your demo is actually working in production. And everybody's realized how ML ops, like the companies that were like the early adopters of ML ops, uh, how they were able to make use of these things in production and like how they could derive real business value from it. Okay, I think I agree. And in fact, uh, Chip Hewin, who teaches ML at Stanford, recently said in an interview that ML ops tools right now actually depend a lot more on the company size, the use case and maturity. How far do you think that's true? I think he's hit the nail on the head with that classification, right? Uh, one cannot compare the investments in ML ops uh, made by a company like Facebook or Google uh, with that of an up and coming startup, right? Uh, the requirements of ML ops or, or like essentially the required ML solution that we have, its scale, its availability, all contribute to the factors on what kind of ML ops tools do we need, right? Uh, for example, like the ML model that serves a Google search request will have an entirely different ml tooling background as compared to any as compared to i guess any other ml solution out there right so very correctly as mentioned by chip uh, that the company size scale and also the problem that they are trying to solve affect very heavily their investment and uh, their focus on their ml ops okay okay interesting now, let us shift a discussion slightly to a closely related term that is DevOps, which is the amalgamation of development and operations. And uh, we've seen that it has been the mainstream strategy for major companies worldwide for quite some time. What then is the differentiating factor between the two similar but not the same terms, DevOps and MLOps? Uh, I guess in my opinion, MLOps is nothing but like a specialization of uh, DevOps. Uh, again, focused on the end-to-end -end life cycle management of machine learning products, right? The key difference of MLOps is to be able to evaluate not just the uh, input, output, and like a predefined user behavior, but also uh, the data and the model quality that we have from our machine learning products, the ability to identify a model degradation versus just a previously unseen behavior from the model, right? Because those are very uh, key factors when it comes to deploying any machine learning model or working with machine learning models, because you need to have a sense of what your model would do when it encounters inputs that it has never seen before, right? Right, right. Yeah. So basically, MLOps is an offshoot of DevOps. So when DevOps principles and workflows are applied to machine learning operations, we call it MLOps. Uh, absolutely. I think that's a very good definition of how we would classify that. Okay. I must say people have really high expectations from MLOps. But uh, with this in mind, do you think the industry is evolving to make use of this emerging tech? And if it is, how do you think the transition will happen? Uh, so I think the transition is actually already happening uh, and not just in the industry, but in the research field as well, right? The push to have standardized model formats, uh, standardized data set definitions, uh, how, how data sets are being annotated, how they are being shared, uh, how there are like now very standard uh, metric calculation scripts, uh, the, the platforms like TensorFlow, PyTorch, uh, all of these have brought a, a sense of standardization to like what would have been like the wild, wild west of like machine learning, deep learning uh, field, like just like four or five years back, right? So I think all of these steps that have been taken to make uh, interoperatable, interoperability and uh, just knowledge sharing that much easier contribute towards being a part of MLOps. Now we've discussed MLOps in quite a lot of detail, and I'm sure that aspiring developers would be curious to know more about this field. Do you think a software engineers can easily transition into the role of an MLOps engineer? Uh, what do you think are the essential skill sets to be an MLOps engineer? Uh, I do not think it is difficult for software engineers to transition 
explain to actually how this field originated right most of the early ml ops engineers were either devops engineers or software engineers uh, who while they were working on projects with other mach machine learning researchers uh, found deficiencies in the way things were being done and essentially they identified areas that they could just improve by applying standard software engineering practices uh, so i i think that making that transition is not at all a difficult one in terms of what are the essential skill sets uh, i think just being uh, just sticking to like the basic uh, software engineering practices of making sure that there is no uh, you know spaghetti code like you are not uh, writing like you know you're not doing the same thing again and again when it can be like uh, platformized or productized right like just sticking to those fundamental concepts uh, that you will come across in any software engineering uh, notebook right like any software engineering 101 practices like those are essentially the main things i would say uh, I, i don't think ml ops engineers need to have uh, ml degrees or like you know have a phd in machine learning uh, doing the maths is difficult but trying to understand like how do we go about building these models or like building these pipelines doesn't require that much math okay and that sounds great that sounds great i hope this gives aspiring ml engineers an idea of what lies ahead for them in ml ops and how they can make the transition in this field if you are an ml engineer looking for opportunities with elite companies in the silicon valley i think it is the best time for you to head on to turing.com/jobs today and sign up Okay um I think this has been a super interesting session pal and uh with this I think it is time to wrap it up but before we let you go could you suggest a few online resources to our audience where they can read more about ML ops and maybe you know learn a few things as well uh, sure so I think uh, online learning nowadays has made everything very easy right and because ml ops is such an up and coming field now you will find numerous resources available online either for free or even like paid courses where you can actually get certain certifications uh, uh i'm sure I, we can share a few uh, resources in the description link below and um, i hope to see more and more people picking up this field because uh i i think being working in the field of ml ops ensures that you are not just building the models but you are also making sure that they get published to production and like you know you you are driving some real uh, benefit for whatever company you might be working for Absolutely, absolutely. As Parv just mentioned, we'll be mentioning the links of resources, the useful resources in the description below. You can head on there. Thank you, Parv. I think this was this was great. Thank you so much. It was very helpful for all the developers and the ones who are aspiring to head into the field of machine learning and ML ops. And thanks again for being a part of a global community of extremely skilled developers and engineers. We hope that this video reaches the larger developer community and helps us give great opportunities to many more skilled developers like you from across the globe. To everybody out there, if you have any questions, please please feel free to drop us an email at support@turing.com. Let us know in the comments below who you would like to hear from in the next video and what you would like to learn in the next video. Give us a big fat thumbs up if you like this video and do not forget to subscribe to turing.com. We will be back with many more such videos. Till then, stay safe, stay home, and click on the link in the description below to apply to Turing. Happy working!